All right, let's have a little chat about the stubborn stuff clinging to your body that you wish would just pack its bags and leave. Today, I'll explain how fat burning actually works to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll finally understand why your body holds onto fat like a dragon hoarding treasure. And you'll know the actual real life secret to making it let go. First, we need to understand what fat even is. I mean, forget all the complicated sciencey words. Your body fat is simply stored energy. It's a pantry full of extra food. And your body is an ancient, paranoid squirrel that is absolutely convinced that a terrible winter is coming tomorrow. So, every time you eat a little more than you immediately need, your body doesn't just waste it. Oh no, that would be irresponsible. It carefully takes that extra energy, packs it into tiny microscopic lunchboxes, and stores them all over your body for later. That jiggly stuff on your arms or belly? It's just a whole bunch of emergency lunchboxes. It's not evil. It's your body being an overprepared parent who packed enough snacks for a three-day road trip when you're only going to the park. So, how does your body measure this energy? Well, with something called calories. Let's stop thinking of calories as some scary number on a food label and start thinking of them as energy coins. Every piece of food you eat gives your body a certain number of energy coins. An apple might give you a handful of coins, a slice of pizza might give you a whole treasure chest of coins, and your body doesn't judge. It simply needs coins. So, your body needs these energy coins to do everything. And I mean everything. It spends coins to pump your blood, it spends coins to think about what to watch next, it even spends coins while you're sleeping to keep you warm and breathing. And this is the most important part of our little talk. The number one rule of fat. The only rule that has ever really mattered is this. To get rid of stored fat, your body must spend more energy coins than you give it. That's it. That's the whole secret. I mean, there's really nothing else. Anyone trying to sell you a different secret is probably trying to sell you a magic bean. When you spend more coins than you eat, your body has to find energy somewhere else. And that is called a calorie deficit. Which is just a grown up way of saying that your body's bank account is overdrawn. Your body's got bills to pay, your heart needs to beat, and your brain needs to worry about that email you forgot to send. And these things, they're non-negotiable. So when there aren't enough new coins coming in from food, then your body finally reluctantly sighs and says, fine, go down to the basement and open up one of the emergency lunch boxes. It then goes to your stored up fat, your personal snack pantry, and starts using that saved up energy to pay its bills. And let's talk about where those coins go, because this is where most people get confused. You don't have to run a marathon to spend energy coins. I mean, the biggest expense your body has every single day is just the cost of being alive. This is your basal metabolic rate, which is a fancy term for your body's rent. Before you even get out of bed, you've already spent a huge pile of energy coins just on breathing, keeping your organs running, and maintaining your body temperature. And this is fantastic news. It means your body is constantly burning energy without you even trying. The problem is, we're very good at eating more coins than our body's rent requires. So, what happens when you do eat too many coins? Well, when you finish a meal and your body's paid all its immediate bills and there's still coins left over, it goes into full-on squirrel mode. It converts those extra energy coins into a substance called triglyceride. And don't worry about that word. Just know it's the gooey stuff inside your fat cells. Your body then stuffs this goo into your fat cells, and your fat cells are like tiny expandable balloons. The more extra goo your body has, the bigger the balloons get. And that's what happens when you gain weight. You aren't necessarily getting more fat cells, you're just filling the ones you already have to their absolute limit. They're getting plump and full, like little water balloons of pure energy. And now for the magic part. How do you actually get that goo out of the balloon? Well, when you finally create that energy shortage, when you spend more coins than you eat, a message goes out all over your body. And the message says, Code red, we're low on coins, release the emergency snacks. Your body then releases hormones that travel to your fat cells and acts like a key. They unlock the fat cells and allow the stored goo to come out and travel through your bloodstream to wherever the energy is needed, like your muscles or your organs. But where does the fat go? Well, it doesn't just melt away like butter in a hot pan. And this is the coolest part. The fat is chemically changed into other things, like a log burning in a fireplace. The log is your fat, and when you burn it, you get heat, which is energy. But the log itself doesn't just disappear, it turns into smoke and ash, and your body does the same thing. The fat goo is broken down into two main things, carbon dioxide and water. The energy is released for your body to use, and the waste products, the smoke and ash, have to leave your body. You get rid of the water by sweating it out or peeing it out, but the carbon dioxide, well, you breathe it out. That's a fact, you're exhaling your fat. 
The vast majority of the weight you lose when you burn fat leaves your body through your lungs as an invisible gas. So every deep breath you take out is your body literally getting rid of tiny tiny bits of what used to be stored fat. And that's not a metaphor. You're breathing out your old pizza dinners and birthday cakes. And the process is happening on a microscopic level, so you can't just huff and puff your way to a six pack in an afternoon, but I mean, that's the physical path it takes to leave you. And this brings us to the rules of diet and exercise. No, they're not magic spells. They're simple tools to help you spend more coins than you eat. That's really their only job. I mean, a diet is a tool for you to control how many energy coins are coming in. And when you choose to eat a salad instead of a burger, you're choosing to give your body fewer coins, making it easier to create a shortage. An exercise is your tool for increasing how many coins your body spends. When you go for a walk, lift weights, or chase a toddler around the house, you're forcing your muscles to demand more energy coins, which in turn encourages your body to open up those fat pantries faster. You need both for the best results, but the underlying rule is always the same. Spend more than you eat. Now, let's clear up some nonsense that people tend to believe. First, you can't choose where your body burns fat from. This is called spot reduction, and it's a total myth. Doing a million crunches will give you strong stomach muscles, but it's not going to specifically burn the fat sitting on top of those muscles. Your body's like a community swimming pool. When it needs water, it simply takes it from the entire pool. It doesn't just take water from the corner where you happen to be splashing. When your body needs energy, it does the same. It pulls from fat stores all over your body wherever it feels like. You have no real say in the matter. Your body might decide to take fat from your face first, your arms second, and your belly last. Sure, it's frustrating, but it's the truth. And second, there are no magic fat-burning foods. A piece of celery does not contain anti-coins that hunt down and destroy fat. Some foods are just very low in energy coins and high in water and fiber, so they make you feel full without giving your body much to store. They're useful tools for managing your coin intake, but they don't have superpowers. Eating a grapefruit won't cancel out the cake you ate later, and your body's accountant is very good at math and it counts every single coin. And finally, sweating a lot does not mean you're burning more fat. Sweat is just your body's air conditioning system. It releases water to cool down your skin. You sit in a hot room and sweat out five pounds of water, but you haven't burned a single amount of fat. As soon as you drink more water, your weight will go right back up. Losing water weight is temporary. Losing fat weight is a result of that slow, steady process of breathing it out. So you see, your body's just a little accountant. Eat more energy coins than you spend, and it saves them in the fat vault for a rainy day. Spend more energy coins than you eat, and it finally cracks open that vault to pay its daily bills. The fat gets broken down, used for energy, and then you can breathe the leftovers out into the world. It's really that simple. And that weird. So congratulations, you're not clueless anymore. You now officially understand the secret language of your own body, a language based entirely on simple addition and subtraction. You know that fat is just stored energy, and the only way to get rid of it is to give your body a reason to use its savings account. Now go, explain this to a real 5-year-old and see if you can get them to eat their broccoli. Catch you later.